Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle and today we're gonna do a video on installing standing seam roofs. So if you want to learn how to install a roof like the one behind me, that's gonna be fastener free, which means you're not gonna have any roof penetrations for leaks down the road. Like this is your true lifetime roof. I'll take you through those steps. So this is gonna be just laying out your simple gable to gable roof. Make sure if you want more information, you drop those questions down below. Um, that come up throughout the video and hopefully I can answer them either in this video or in a future video, but let's get into this. This machine here is the Swenson Shear, which obviously a lot of you aren't gonna go out and get. It's like a $10,000 machine, but they claim that you are going to save all of that money in the first couple jobs on labor alone. I've still yet to determine that because I haven't done enough yet, but it is killer and I'll show you how it works. We're gonna slide this in, this sheet of standing seam. I'm gonna line up exactly where I want it now, we're only going to be cutting off one side, and I'll show you that. I just got my male leg cut. Now, this is the process that we're doing because we want a special detail that we don't have to do. But I'll show you what it is, and uh, if you're not doing this detail, this is even quicker. And I don't know if that's gonna focus in or not, but now the panel is prepped. It's got a beautiful hem on it on this side here. And the thing that we have to do is that leg right there on the end. That's what we have to do manually that this machine doesn't do for us. It closes off the end of the panel so you don't look up into that leg, but that's it. Now we have a perfectly hemmed standing seam panel. I'll also show you how to do it by hand uh, because you know if you don't have this machine, you're gonna need to know how to do that. All right, so the first and most important thing I think is layout. And so what we're gonna do before we install any panels, check the entire width of our building to confirm the exact dimension. And then we will divide that by our 16 inch panel layout, figure out what is gonna be our first and last piece. We want those to be the same. You don't just start on an end and pray for the best. That is not the right way to install metal roofing, especially standing seam because it's not as forgiving as a corrugated or ribbed roof with an exposed fastener. Just be careful your fall protection there. 76 one and an eighth? I mean, 76 one is what exactly it should be. So that's pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and check our top just to confirm dimensions. Would you grab me that fall protection? We'll go right underneath. So now it's important to not only check the bottom dimension of your roof, um, I think checking the top is also important. Okay, so that's exact where we want it. 76 one and an eighth is an eighth inch big, but we should be able to make that up no problem as we get close to our end or our last couple. We'll just move the bottom over like a 16th on the last two sheets, and then we'll be exactly uh, where we want to be. So 76, is divisible by four foot exactly, which means that's 19 times three. It's 57 sheets. So we have 57 fulls, or in this case, 56 fulls, and then two eight and a half inches on each end. For one side? For one side, eight and a half inches on each end. Because 76 foot is exactly 57 sheets. See what I'm saying? but we don't start with an exact because we can't bend it up. So we're gonna do an eight and a half and an eight and a half on each end. All right, now that we have the dimensions of our building, our roof determined, um, before we lay out our marks, if you haven't already, which we have, 
uh, check square. We had to do that in order to sheathe it and everything was like perfect. So I feel really good about that. This is where you would wanna check a triangle, like a three, four, five, or use Pythagorean theorem and some simple math to determine your Eve line uh, perfectly square to your end gable line, which uh, we, could, we could just do just to confirm it, just to make sure. I'm gonna mark 16 feet. Throw me your tape measure. 15, 10, and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna be 23, six and three eighths, 23, six and three eighths on the money. Mm, so that's good. So what, so what that means is that we can use our gable as the measuring uh, to determine our layout of our steel. If the gable is not square to your fascia here on your eave, you're gonna wanna adjust the starting point at the top there, either ahead or back to make it square so that these sheets run really nice. So now that we have our layout determined, we have uh, confirmed the squareness of our roof and we know what that first and last piece have to be cut at, we're gonna go down and we'll get that first one ripped and bent up. And then we'll be back up here to start installing. So this first panel here, what we wanna do is we wanna put a bend up in it and we want the panel itself to be eight and a half inches. So when determining that, we always go off the center of the male leg here and eight inches, or sorry, eight and a half is right here. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I want an inch bend up on it. So I'm actually gonna cut it right here at nine and a half or right on this minor rib all the way up. And then we'll use our bender to put a nice bend on. And that bend up is necessary to lock down this panel because there's no fasteners. And we're gonna show you how that works. Now these are the benders we're gonna use. These are Melco, model number ER3, because they have three rollers. Uh, they're adjustable to about four and a half inches. So we're just gonna do a one inch bend up and looks like we're pretty good there. And these are pretty slick. So all you're gonna do is just work them back and forth, creating a nice little uh, bend that starts developing. And then once you've got that crease forming, you can really start working it up. And now we've got a nice bend up here. You might sometimes just take your hammer and just work it up even tighter because if you go too over tight, you might end up scratching your, uh, your steel here. Little tip, if you're gonna do this method, the smoothness and the effectiveness of this tool is determined by the straightness of your shear cut. So take time to make that as straight as possible because it is rolling, these guides are rolling on that cut to determine how straight it is. So what this piece of trim is called is an extended eave flashing. It's kind of like a, a drip edge of sorts, except for this face is extended even further so that we can lock on our standing seam panel. Now this is, this is important. We can do this a couple different ways, but I like the extended eave way, so that's the way I'm gonna show you. This piece also needs to have a special detail done on the end so that it is left here for a future detail, which I hope I can share with you guys. And I don't have my square. My buddy Greg's got a square. No. Why don't we have any of our tools? Why were you looking at me like that when you were saying that we gotta do this a special way? I think you know why, Greg. Are you, are you singling me out? Not singling you out. I think you're singling me out. This is one time, Kyle. Actually, <laughs> I think I would say it's 100% of the time. <laughs> Did you install any other pieces? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna let it go. We're gonna. We're gonna let it slide. I made one mistake. <laughs> it's all it takes, Greg. So what I've what I've done is left myself an inch here on this kick out, and that's gonna get tied into my rake trim that when it goes on the gable end here, 
and I gave myself a little one inch bend. So if I need to rivet that trim into this to keep it tight, I've got that. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw this about every 16 inches because this is what's keeping our panel from flying in the wind. So this here is a cleat trim. It's a cleat rake trim and it's gonna go along the rake. And this detail here with this bend out is going to be used to lock on our final trim detail on this gable. But for now, we gotta make sure it's underneath our first panel. And you also wanna screw this down because this is what's gonna hold down your steel. All right, now we have our rake trim here. We've got our eave trim here. The next thing we need to do before we lay that first panel is install some double bead butyl mastic tape. You can see we've got two beads on it. We're gonna always try to focus our fasteners in the middle if we have to, but this is actually gonna go right over top of the fasteners that we just put in on this extended eave trim. Now I'm not gonna go crazy. I like to just lay out what's in front of me. All right, so now we have our panel that we did prep. It's all been bent. We've got our one inch bend up here. I've got my hem at the bottom. And all I'm gonna do for now is set this on to my extended eave. And I'm looking to flush it up on the end of my rake cleat trim because we've already checked our top of our gable and the bottom of our gable are square to the eave, which uh, is this guy right here. And once I get this, right where I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a screw into that slot. Now those are the only fasteners that these panels will get throughout the roof because these are slotted grooves and all the expansion and contraction can still happen in this panel. All right, now as Greg is screwing that down, uh, coming down from the top, I'm gonna go ahead and take my hand benders with a piece of cardboard. And you know what, somebody in a previous video said, hey, why don't you just tape something to it so you don't have to keep holding the cardboard. It's a great idea. It's a great idea and I'm gonna do that. But for now, I use a piece of cardboard so I don't do any damage to the panel. Now that we have the first piece on, we're gonna use the male leg here to make sure that our layout is set off of that perfectly, which is set off of our gable trim and we already know is within an eighth of an inch, top to bottom. So we should be good to lay it out from there. Greg, your calves look bigger on camera, like it added 15 pounds. No, I've just been working them out. Simple as that. Now that the hem is there, we're just gonna lock that hem on. I'm gonna make sure I'm right where I like it. Greg's gonna make sure he likes it. You can see it becomes a very repetitive process. It's not hard making up the panels, making sure your layout's correct. Probably the hardest part. Then the installation, you know, you're just hitting marks and putting screws in. And now it's time to put on another piece of extended eave flashing. And I'll show you the detail for that. Now with your eave, extended eave, you can't just take it and overlap it. You can't just butt it in because it gives a place for water. What we gotta do is notch this back so that this piece can slide right over top of it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that these hems on this piece are opened up and we're just going to slide it right till we stop. And that's gonna keep this nice and straight and consistent. And then all I'm gonna do with this guy is just work it back down.
and then continue running my beetle tape. And now we're ready to keep going. I got my mark 16 inches off of this guy. Remember that tab we left long down on the standing seam machine down there? That was for this guy right here. And I do that so that when this piece bends over, you can't see up in here. Wind-driven rain isn't gonna go up there and it just looks a lot better. Now one thing I do when I'm using these hand benders is try to make sure that the top piece of my bender here is running in parallel with the plane of my roof. I've learned that if you don't do that, you could develop just a slight little bend in it and not be straight with your material. You want to take the over under on how many people think that the building's still moving? You know, over 10 people in the comments. Yeah. But by me asking how many people are going to say over, will that make them? But will that make more people do it or less people do it? So yesterday we started this roof. So if you you see our clothes have changed potentially. I'm wearing the same shirt, not the same one. It's a That's different gross, one. Dude. I have multiple like, shirts, uh, which these should be probably for sale by the time you guys see this video. So if you want to pick up a super premium. RR shirt, hey, go check out the link down below. I'm gonna do that YouTube thing. Anyway, so what happened was yesterday we had a Deraku, what, what was it called? I don't know. I don't know, it's spelled like Derico. We had a big storm. Big freaking storm that was all the way from like Kansas up to Wisconsin and it blew through in like winds in excess of like 70, 80 miles an hour. There was tons of damage. As you can see, our building is still here Customer lost a section of tree over there, but uh, we're back today and we're gonna try to finish out this roof. We just spent the morning or the first hour basically prepping all the panels for the rest of the side. Greg just blew all the limbs and leaves off of this and we're gonna start installing the rest of these panels. You're as bad as telling time as it as I am taking care of my phone, is what he said. Love you. So I guess that just goes to show the isotunes work pretty well because I've only got one of them in and I just had a phone conversation with my wife. My phone is broken. Well, kind of broken. I can still obviously connect to it through Bluetooth. Thank God, huh? I mean, I'm trying to run a business here, Greg. Without a phone, that's impossible you these days. You have got phone, phone call this entire morning. You know what? That's a surprise. I had like three phone calls early and I haven't had a phone call other than my wife since my phone broke. Yeah. It's like people know. God. God's plan. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. I just had a perfectly good conversation. It was lovely, in fact. One of the best I've had all day on my isotunes. What I'm saying is, if somebody wants to go try their own isotunes and they want to use the RRB10 code, they have a better chance of having lovely conversations, Greg. While they work. Is that guaranteed? No, not guaranteed, not, not, like everything I've just said is not proven and tested. It's not been, you know, approved by isotunes to say that. So don't go suing them if you don't have lovely conversations after you've used my RRB10 ten dollar savings code and tried out your own isotunes. Only reason I have this in is so that I can get phone calls. That's it. And I just got so my it's first not just for hearing protection. No, that's the beauty of it. Like it's multi purpose. I could be listening to music right now. Why don't you keep working by the way? Oh shoot, dude, I, I, I... Good lord. 
what am I, what am I paying you for? Just to hawk ads to people through my YouTube channel? <laughs> So there we go, we've got this trim where I've, I've left this long and that is because when I bring down my gable trim, I'm gonna do my best to miter that into this trim. And uh, I just think it looks better than just cutting it straight and then having another piece of trim die. I try to bring them together and I'll try to share that with you. As you can see, we are on our last piece. This piece right here, the goal was to be eight and a half inches, which is what we had on the other end. Greg is at eight and three eighths center. And now I'm eight and three eighths. So we didn't make it exactly eight and a half. Looks like we grew an eighth of an inch, which not a big deal, really it's not. I don't think anybody's gonna see an eighth of an inch. Um, and that could just be the inconsistency on our measuring. However, now that we are eight and three eighths, the bottom and the top, we'll go down and bend this piece up so that we have that one inch bend up so that we can detail our fascia. Yes, you'll see here, I had to pull some nails I didn't like the actual subfascia. There was a little bit of a kick to it, just a slight bow out, and I wanted to fix that before we put this trim on because if this thing isn't laser straight, um, I feel like you see it in the trims and I don't want that to happen. So I'll fix that when I move my lift around to the end. You know, I think this is a really good example of um, when we're at the point now where we're roofing this standing seam metal and you know, the framing is not perfect. Now that's on me. I didn't, I don't know what happened. I just, we must have fastened this uh, subfascia without checking it for straight perfectly. And uh, there's just a little, little kick on it right where these nails are pulled. So we're gonna have to do a little trimming and get it tucked back in. No big deal. But the point is the more time you spend early on, the easier it is later on to do your finishing detail. So if I would have checked this earlier, we just go down and bend up our piece and install it. Now I gotta do a little bit of rework. So sometimes prep and um, trying to be as close to perfect as possible in the beginning will save you lots of time in the long run. Yeah, yeah man, here. Step on that, my guy. There. Keep those dirty boots. Yeah, safety boots. Safety boots. The safety sneaks, man. So with this last piece getting installed, my microphone died, which is no big deal, but we're gonna install it just like every other piece, lock it into place. And then what we have to do is make sure we secure the end so it doesn't flap in the wind. And I'm just gonna use some scrap trim here, bend it over the top, make sure it's nice and tight and I'm gonna screw it down. Now, once it's screwed down, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I take my bender and make sure I clamp this as tight as possible just to secure it. But then that's what's gonna keep that panel in place until we finish it with our rake trim.